Let's explore the Muscles tool in 3D Coats Sculpt Workspace. You can find it in the Object section of the Tool Panel toward the bottom. I'll click on that, and it will allow me to either build from an object where it will attach or essentially weld or fuse itself to the object, or you can create it on a separate layer, and it will still attach to any surface that 3D Coat finds, but it will remain on a separate layer so that you can modify it separately. It works in both surface and voxel mode, and it's extremely useful for sculpting hair or any other type of large fibers or strands, all the way down to very fine strands. It's one of the tools you'll probably want to go to when creating things like beards, hair caps, things like that. For example, I built this up using tools like the Primitives tool, such as the Freeform Blob. You can use this to create a base volume, shape it the way you want. Let me step out of that tool. You could also use things like the Curves tool to create really large strands, but again, I find that starting with some type of a primitive probably is the best way to approach it. However, you could create really large strands to build your base, especially if the hair is very low to the scalp. But if it extends way off the surface, you may want to use something like a primitive. You'll notice how it tries to attach, but in this case, I don't have enough resolution because you can see how degraded it is. If I turn wireframe on, yeah, you can see it just doesn't have enough resolution. All right, so let's clear that from this layer and give it some more resolution. As you may know, when you're working with voxels, scale matters. If your object is very small on my grid here, you're going to need to give it more resolution on the layer. It's tantamount to using more dots per inch on a document in Photoshop. So let's increase that one more time. Now, if I were to sculpt, it has quite a bit more. It adheres to the surface until you begin to veer off of the object and it goes out into 3D space based on the camera view. Let me undo that. I'm going to right click and drag left to decrease the size of my brush. And we can maybe adhere to the surface. And you may be asking, well, that's going to take me a while to build up any volume with that. All you have to do is right click and drag up or increase the depth value here, and that will thicken your strands. So yeah, you could build up some volume, but again, I think the quickest way to go about it is to use a primitive or the curves tool. So let me go to my hair cap that I have here, or before I do that, let me just go ahead and show the different types of strands that you can use. Muscle one, I'm going to bring my brush size down. Let me unhide that. Muscle two, 10 in. And those are your three different types. So again, we'll clear that. One other thing I should point out is as I drag this out into space, you'll notice if I hold down the left mouse button, it will continue to smooth. Let me go ahead and clear that. Okay. Let me hide that again. I'll unhide this. And I'm going to right click and drag down to decrease the thickness of the strand. To keep the video as concise as possible, I'm going to speed up the playback at various points. So when you see the fast forward icon, you know that it's being sped up. Now, the smaller your strands, the more resolution you're going to need.
It's worth noting in the ePanel, the different draw modes will affect the thickness. The absolute draw mode will be rather constant, whereas the first draw mode will affect both the radius and the depth as you apply more pressure to your stylus. I can see that I probably don't have enough resolution to create really fine strands here at the base. So I probably want to increase the resolution. Instead of clicking the increase resolution icon here, I want to click resample. That way I can arbitrarily set it to the number that I want. Right now it's about 5 million, but I can increase that to about 10 million. Hit OK. I'll also click Smooth All a time or two. You can continue to refine this with smaller and smaller strands as you go, but you would need to adjust your resolution accordingly. You also have on-plane functionality. For example, if you wanted to use the right mouse button click to set the plane direction and the pick point, you could right click there. Let's undo that. You could also confine it to a specific plane here and so on. If you want to see more about the on plane functionality. Make sure to check out the plane tool. It goes in depth about using this, but you could do simple things like use the plus or minus key to walk that plane back once you have set it. The minus key will bring it toward the camera, plus key will push it back, and it will move in these increments. So if you want it to move in larger increments, you would increase the value here, or in smaller increments, obviously reduce the value. And that's a quick look at the muzzle tool. There are tools that are very similar to it. They just behave differently. For example, toothpaste, spikes, and snake. So make sure to check out those videos and we will conclude this one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.